Nigeria's federal government has called one of the state governors as the federal high court has ruled in favor of financial autonomy for local governments. Are there better days ahead for governance in the country? And is the much talked about third force finally here? Seven political parties have joined forces ahead of the upcoming 2023 general elections. What impact will they have? And we have analysis of the headlines from today's national dailies. Very good morning to you watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. What is a beautiful Tuesday morning reaching you live from our studios right here at Victoria Island, Lagos. My name is Kofi Bartels alongside Messi Ekpopo. Let's move on now with our trending stories and look, of course, this is where we get to look at what Nigerians have been talking about, especially on social media. And the first uh, interesting one that we have been monitoring happens to be a so-called new phone call tax, a phone call tax set up by the federal government to hear the government plans to use a tax to fund health care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A new tax that will be used to fund health care and health care services to vulnerable Nigerians. And um, we've it sent a lot of tongues wagging and talking, uh, the Nigerian government introducing this new phone call tax. All right, new phone call tax. It's talking about helping Nigerians who cannot afford the cost of Medicare with this tax. Now, President Muhammad Buhari had said that the national Health Insurance Authority, Authority Bill 2022, which he signed sometime last week, um, will ensure coverage for 83 million poor Nigerians who cannot pay premiums. And of course, there have been a lot of analysis of the previous health insurance regime, which is the NHIS, the National Health Insurance Scheme that has been on for some time now and has been a monumental failure. According to some analysts, it's been a monumental failure ridden with a corruption, ridden with fraud. And whilst billions of naira have been spent or has been spent on the National Health Insurance Scheme, very few Nigerians proportionally have benefited in any way and have health insurance. And this is why this new bill was signed by the president called the National Health uh, Insurance Authority Bill 2020 now becomes an act, the president having signed that uh, into law. We hear that about 8 in 10 Nigerians do not have health insurance cover. And this really highlights and puts into perspective the monumental failure that the health insurance scheme has been over the past years. Uh, a survey was conducted by NOI polls and they came up with that uh, particular uh, statistic and the average Nigerian pays cash when he or she goes to the hospital. Um, those who work in paid employment uh, or those who try to, to do something for themselves have uh, the private health, um, health insurance schemes to thank for. You know, we have the private health companies who have been doing their own business and doing their work uh, over the past few years. But if you talk about public health and public health insurance coverage, is basically non-existent. Um, so, this the federal government is saying this new phone call tax is meant to fund basic health care provision in the country. Um, they will use the health insurance levy to fund it. They have what they call a special intervention fund. They have what they call a health care provision fund. And then, of course, they're looking at donations and gifts and investment proceeds. Um, so, it looks like it's a purely welfareist idea. You know, purely welfare is the idea. They're not seeking to take money from Nigerians, you know, bit by bit, um, as, as sort of a contributory scheme. It seems the government wants to tax the populace so that they can provide health care for the rest of those who cannot afford health care in the country. A bit like what you have in the UK with the NHIS over there, um, those who have, uh, those who work those who can earn enough to pay a good tax, they fund the cost of health care for the rest of the country. Um, so, 
With an average of 11 cobo per second, the new law we're told implies at least 9% charge on every second of phone calls you make. 9% charge on every second of phone call you make. So you have um, uh, the average call rate, like I said, being 11%, 11 cobo per second. So if you want to take about 10% of that, that'll be a 1%. 0.1 cobo. I don't think there's anything upon one cobo. So that'll be about one cobo, um, you know, for every second of phone call you make um, to be able to fund uh, healthcare for the vulnerable in the country. Now, when we're talking about the vulnerable, who are we looking at? Who is the federal government talking about? We're looking at children under the age of five. We're looking at pregnant women. We're looking like the at the aged. We're looking at the fiscally challenged. And we're looking at mentally challenged persons as well as indigent people, you know, uh, this from time to time are defined as vulnerable group as far as uh, uh, healthcare is concerned. So a, a cursory look at the new health insurance authority bill uh, would show in section 26 of that act that it is written that the federal government will raise funds for groups through various measures but the sources of the funds can be reviewed by the council, all right? And it, 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 it uh, you know, requires every Nigerian citizen to, uh, or Nigerian resident, uh, to obtain health insurance. So what I was talking about was the HMO. Yeah, the HMO. But um, telecoms operators have already been, 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 been talking about taking their, you know, their phone bill up. Nigerians are having to pay for quite a lot, you know, in, in increased uh, measure, you look at uh, uh, the, the petrol, you know, cost, you look at the cost of transportation, you look at um, how much Nigerians pay for electricity, these things have gone up. Um, the cost of transportation is not a government tax, by the way, but, you know, it's connected to what they pay, uh, what you pay for fuel. So some are saying we're paying more for electricity, we're paying more for uh, petrol and diesel, and it's all affecting how much you pay for transportation. Um, the Naira is not doing great. Inflation is on the increase. Should we be paying more for our phone calls? With the oil revenue the country has or makes, uh, with the oil wealth the country has, with the internally generated revenue the country has, uh, with the proceeds you know, recovered from corruption, uh, shouldn't the government be able to fund healthcare by itself? Or should those uh, who want to take advantage of such a scheme pay for it themselves, no matter how small. Um, the telecommunications companies had last month proposed uh, a 40% tariff increase, and this already was there before the federal government's own, you know, idea of charging 11% per second for every phone call that you and I make to fund healthcare. So at the time, in April, when the private telecoms operators have said they were going to, you know, they were going to implement a 40% or considering a 40% increase in their tariffs. Uh, the group had said that the fee for calls would increase from 6 naira 40 kobo uh, to 8 naira 95 kobo, while the price cap for SMS will increase from 4 naira to 5 naira 61 kobo per SMS or per page. And so these are the things that we have to grapple with. Um, it means that whilst they're increasing it by 40%, they would have to add a few more digits to it because of the federal government's own plan uh, to fund health care for vulnerable Nigerians through this phone call tax. Let's move on. Um, how can Nigerian youth take over is a question that uh, has been on the lips of some people, especially with the not too young to run idea. And uh, the answers, protests, and the situation of things in the country um, a lot of people have been asking how Nigerians can take over. People have been commenting, uh, commentators, analysts, groups, opinion leaders and all that have been commenting on how Nigerian youth can have a greater participation in the affairs of the country, a greater say in how things are done or run in the country. Well, the United States of America has, has added its voice to this conversation and uh, one of the stories that um, attracted a lot of attention and uh, comments was the United States of America saying that the only way that Nigerian youth can take over leadership of the country is to fully dominate the voting system. So they're saying it's to fully dominate the voting system. Uh, the U.S. ambassador to Nigeria, Ms. Mary Leonard, stated this 
uh, at the 13th graduation of the American University in Yola, Adamawa State. That's the American University of Nigeria uh, in Yola, Adamawa State, formerly known as the APTI American University. Well, the American ambassador pointed out that uh, the Nigerian youth population placed them on an advantage to use their votes to decide who becomes the leader. So what she's saying is that we have more youth in the country, you know, and that the numbers are an advantage. So the youth have to use the numbers to get into the voting system and take advantage of those numbers to dominate uh, the voting system. We we'll quote her. She said in her words, and I quote, I can't stress this enough. Voting is the way your voice can be heard. And to ensure that issues that concern you and your community become a priority for lawmakers and elective individuals, it gives you access to those you may wish to end uh, your vote. So this is what the woman said about the youth and their participation in politics and indeed how uh, they can take over the governance system in the country. Uh, that's an interesting one. Let's move on and look at what um, the Nobel laureate Wale Shoinka has been saying um, whenever Kongi, as is popularly called, speaks, um, everyone listens because, first of all, you might learn a word, a word or two, new words in English. Um, he, he has a gift of the gab. Uh, you would also get to hear something good, very important points about national life. He doesn't always speak, but when he speaks, he has something important to say. Now, Professor Wale Shoinka, he has raised concern over the perennial insurgency at killings in the northern part of the country. And he's saying that if nothing is done to address the perennial killings, insurgency, the violence in the north of the country, other parts of Nigeria that are peaceful will start witnessing terrorism soon. In other words, he's saying there'll be a gradual move to other parts of the country where you don't have Boko Haram, where you don't have Ansaru, where you don't have ISWAP or even so-called bandits, you know, we will be seeing terrorism in those parts of the country. And he has said that, that other relatively peaceful parts of the country will start grappling with this menace in no distant future. And he's saying the government has to do something drastic about this in order to tackle insurgency. And um, he was speaking at the launch of a memorial publication uh, of the late, or on the late General Ibrahim Atayru, former Chief of um, uh, Defense Staff at the Ladi Kwali Hall in Abuja during the week. And he says the federal government needs to adopt the lateral thinking, what he calls lateral thinking, and new constructs outside the orthodox boxes of military engagement in tackling insurgency. What he's saying, what Wale Shirenka is saying, is the federal government needs to think outside of the box. Think outside of the box and do something about the insurgency in the northern part of the country, else it's going to creep into the peaceful uh, parts of the country. We'll take a quote from him. He said, quote, The times are not normal and thus require offbeat lateral thinking in new constructs outside orthodox boxes of military engagements. Above all, let no one imagine that the ongoing insurgency will forever remain within its present borders. It spreads, it contaminates, it breeds mutations in the least expected places you expect that from Bolesha. But it gives us reason for concern. And it gives us reason to worry. Because this is a real threat. And it's a real possibility. Think about Boko Haram in Lagos. Or Boko Haram in Abuja. We're next for Nigeria. The earlier something is done, the better for all of us. This has been a trending segment right here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll be right back when we return. We look at the headlines of the pages of the National Dailies with analysis uh, by our guests. Stay with us. <music> 